All right, Warren Law. Is it true that you've got the best hair in the V8 paddock? <laughs> well, look, it's, it's one of those things. I think that short back and sides has been done by everyone in the V8 supercar paddock. influences in your life as far as driving goes like I'd be probably major one of those ones obviously <laughs> um, but I mean as a as someone growing up in the sport name a couple of your heroes back then and do you still have heroes in the sport now look look growing up um, for me I suppose my early part of my life it was um, Peter Brock and Dick Johnson they were the two biggest names in our sport for so long uh, and when I was sort of growing up through the mid 80s um, they were they were the biggest names that you could possibly get in Australian motorsport. But um, probably the biggest influence in my career has been my dad because um, growing up around cars and driving, being involved in his driving school business down in Sydney for so many years, um, and he was the one that first got me involved in racing. And he sort of my passion for racing came from sort of watching dad race and being sort of around him and and, and wanting to emulate my dad. First actual race I ever did is actually coming up for my 20 year anniversary. It was uh, 1993. It was a six hour relay race at Eastern Creek um, and I actually did it with my dad. So it was, um, look a lot of guys go right through their careers sort of being able to hopefully one day sort of race with their dads uh, and I've been lucky enough to do that several times since but yeah the first race was a little Honda CRX at Eastern Creek. Along the way I've done a, a lot of different one mate championships I suppose that's what's probably really sort of um, been the been the biggest influence in my career is all the different one mate championships I did starting with the Suzuki series in 95 and then later on into the Mitsubishi Mirages, the V8 Ute series um, and a, a bit of one mate racing over in New Zealand and that as well and sort of along the way just gaining experience and gaining exposure and everything like that but certainly probably the big breakthrough for me was certainly the V8 Ute series because from there uh, the first invitation to do the V8 supercar endurance races came uh, back in 2002. Out of all the cars that you've driven, all the different series that you've driven in, is there one that's been a favourite uh, in particular? Look, there's been lots of different things for many different reasons. Probably, look, some of the best and hardest racing I ever did was probably back in the V8 Ute series because, um, like, there's 32 cars, all sort of identical. Uh, and back when I first started in the championship, uh, where you would qualify for the first race, they had this uh, unique system where they would then sort of reverse the grid positions for the second race. So I distinctly remember uh, the uh, Clipsal 500 2002, first race in a ute, qualified on pole position. So race two, I started 32nd. So it, um, it really sort of taught me a lot about racecraft um, in, in those years in the ute series as well, because uh, it doesn't matter where you qualified, at one point over the weekend, you're having to fight your way through. And, uh, and certainly the driving standards were, uh, were pretty sort of uh, suspect to say the least. Is there still a series that you aspire to? Is there something that you haven't, a series you haven't raced or a race you haven't raced or a car you haven't raced that you'd still like to, to uh, aim for? I think, look, for me, in terms of where I'm at in my career, it's more about the races and, and the events that I would still like to do. Um, probably the big one on the bucket list for me would still be the Le Mans 24-hour race. Um, again, it comes back to that sort of love of doing the longer distance races and, and those sorts of events. Um, would love to go back and do more races at Nürburgring, uh, maybe even the Spa 24 hour, which is a race that I did many, many years ago. Um, and then maybe even other events like the Daytona 24 hour. Again, some of, those, some of those key long distance races where you've got Porsches and Ferraris and some of the really sort of cool exotic GT cars uh, that we see here at the Bathurst 12 hour, There's, they're probably the events that I would still sort of aspire to do. Do you, uh, do you actually train a lot? Like we obviously see you eat about 16 packets of Maltesers here. And, uh... <laughs> cars that you've driven, if you could go back tomorrow and schedule a drive in one of the cars, what would be your favourite car to drive? Um, oh geez, that's a tough one. Um, I suppose there's different cars for different reasons. Uh, in terms of outright speed, um, like the car, the Mitsubishi Evo that I drove at the World Time Attack event last year at Eastern Creek is certainly right up there in terms of just outright speed, like the aero grip on that car, like it's nearly four and a half seconds lap faster than a V8 supercar 
and we're still not even on a slick tyre, it's still on a, on a, on a groove tyre. Um, then obviously there's the, the Audi that I've been lucky enough to drive at the Bathurst 12 hour for the last three years, obviously going to Nürburgring uh, the last two years to drive over there, that's, that's been an absolute highlight. Uh, but look, still V8 supercars, they're just, they're so cool to drive. You've uh, had a lot of success with different drivers uh, in, the, in the team environment in, with, with the endurance races. Um, a lot of pressure comes with that, I guess, as well, because you don't just tend to partner guys that are mid-pack, like when uh, with uh, James uh, Courtney, obviously, we're trying to help him win a championship. Do you sort of thrive on that pressure, or does it ever get to you, the fact that you're not just trying to win a race for yourself, but there's a guy, another person's championship involved? Yeah, look, it, it's one of those things you've really got to sort of, um, you've got to put your own ambitions aside for, for a moment, and it's, as you said, it's all about sort of helping that person in their quest for the championship, and obviously going to Bathurst this year with Craig Lowndes, um, in terms of in terms of racing at Bathurst, there is no bigger name than Craig Lowndes. Certainly in this modern era of the sport, as, as so many, many people make the reference, he's the modern day Peter Brock. Um, you look at the popularity of the guy, uh, and like his popularity is is way above all the other guys out there. But in terms of the pressure that that brings of, of being with someone like Craig and obviously at Red Bull Racing Australia, um, going there sometimes with a team that's got the professionalism of, of what they do, in some ways it makes my job that little bit easier because you know that you're going there with the right tools, the right equipment and certainly the right people around you. Does it uh, satisfy you when, you when you're testing with someone like Craig, when you step in that role, when you've got upcoming races? Is there a little bit of competitive part of you that likes to equal his times or maybe even get a little bit of a time on him considering that you're not in the car as much as he is? But in the back of your mind, do you thrive on that a little bit or is it just sort of general? Look, the Look, I suppose you'd be lying if you said that it didn't sort of uh, factor in on your on your mind there, um, because certainly if you were a long way off the pace, it would certainly play very heavily on your mind, and certainly the team would let you know about it. But that's the big thing about um, coming in into these endurance races. You've, as I said before, you've got to put your own ego aside. You've got to put your own aspirations aside. And uh, as a as an endurance driver, your aspirations and and your wants are that of your the driver that you're trying to help and that of the team. You're out there doing the best job that you can for them. And look, if I do the best job I can for them, then I'm doing the best job I can for me. Looking past uh, Bathurst, like uh, next year, have you, have you got a contract for next year? Uh, I don't, in terms of uh, my V8 side of things, I don't. Uh, but the, my deal with the Carrera Cup is a three-year deal, so this is obviously the first year of that. So it's still two more years to go in Carrera Cup. And obviously, um, look, as soon as this year's uh, V8 races are out of the way, I'll be uh, trying to sort of uh, lock rolling into a, into a meeting and hopefully uh, would love to go back and obviously partner with Craig again for the coming years. Is there a, a little bit of a selfish part of you that would actually like to tackle a, uh, a full season in V8s in a, in a competitive team? Yeah, look, there's obviously that, that want and desire to, to want to be in a competitive team. And, uh, in, and in years gone by, when I've had full-time drives, I haven't been in sort of the best teams and the best environments and all that sort of stuff. So at the end of 2011, when the, uh, when the option came as to, well, what do I do the following year, um, there'd been a discussion that I'd had with Roland and he'd expressed an interest in me coming to, at that stage, was Team Vodafone to partner up with Craig. And look, for me, it's, it's all about winning races and being in a competitive team. And if it means that I only do two or three races a year in V8 supercars, but know that you stand a genuine chance of, of being on the podium to win races and to be in a team like that, I'd rather do that than just be there to make up numbers on the grid and sort of be running around in sort of 14th and 15th position, never standing a chance to be at the front. So for me, it's, it's more about the quality of the racing than the quantity. The one thing in my life is there's no there's no set routine in terms of that weeks are, are, are very similar. But in terms of my racing this year, obviously Craig and I had the, the Bathurst 12 hour that we sort of both started the year off with. Uh, again, driving in the Audi, which is, as we spoke about already, it's such a cool car around Bathurst. Even though it doesn't have the straight line speed of a V8 supercar, um, but across the top of the mountain, like from say the cutting to Forest Elbow, it's nearly two seconds faster than a V8 supercar. And then obviously this year I had my full-time driving career cup driving the no second chance Porsche. Currently we're third in, in points uh, and also Bathurst is an incredibly busy weekend because also I've got Carrera Cup that weekend as well as my V8 commitments. The very following weekend it's World Time Attack again at Eastern Creek driving the, the Evo that we won last year. Uh, we were only testing just a couple of days ago out at Queensland Raceway getting that car ready. Following weekend back here for the Gold Coast 600 again V8 and Carrera Cup. It's the final round of Carrera Cup this year at the Gold Coast event so it's going to be great. It's my home race this year uh, and not only just doing one but doing both so V8s and um, 
and obviously Carrera Cup. We sit here at Hollywood Stunt Driver. It's, um, this has become a huge part of my life. It's uh, this Christmas coming up for five years that I've been involved in the show. This, this is a, a fantastic job in between everything else. It keeps me driving cars and we get to do some of the coolest stunts out here, driving on two wheels and entertaining sort of 1,500 people two to three times a day. So um, I'm really lucky in all the different things that I get to do. And obviously there's stuff that I do with Motor Magazine, the Porsche Sport Driving School. There's a whole host of things, but essentially my life revolves around cars and driving. What kind of leads us into where we are now? Like obviously uh, a second at Sandown. Um, and knowing you and seeing you around the place and seeing people congratulate you on that second, it's kind of like a, a, a Olympian who just got silver kind of thing. It was great to get silver, but it's not exactly what you wanted on the day, was it? No, look, it definitely wasn't. Look, Craig and I were both obviously um, disappointed considering we did win Sandown last year. Um, but obviously, um, look, Jamie and Paul, they, they did a great job. They had much better car speed than us. Um, but look, we had a great test day only a couple of weeks ago. So look, we're going into Bathurst with a, with a really strong preparation. We're very confident going there. Uh, obviously, we, it was great to get third last year. But again, it's sort of like you always want to do that a little bit better. And, uh, and obviously, look, as we said, as we've already spoken about, look, Craig's results at Bathurst, he's uh, won there five times. It would be fantastic for me to be able to have my first win there. But it's 161 hard laps of racing and there's, there's so much that can happen on the day. And, and realistically, it's all about the last 20 laps. It's buying yourself that ticket towards the end of the race. Um, once you get to that last fuel window or whenever the last safety car is, realistically, that's when the real race starts. The, the rest of the day, you just it's a game of chess of just trying to set yourself up for that run to the finish. So. Fingers crossed we can uh, stand on the top step uh, in a couple of weeks. Bathurst being so close now, um, did, I think last year you started in the car on the grid, is that yes. right? Yes. Do you, is, do you prefer to start or would you prefer to sort of come in after the after all the, you know, the busyness of the start of the race is over? Oh look, it's, it's one of those things, there's two sort of trains of thought because the nerves on race morning are always quite high and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and at least if, you, if you're getting in for the start, look for me, once I get in the car, I'm fine. It's it's the pre-race build-up and everything like that. So even like last year, once I sort of got in the car and got around to on the warm-up lap, because obviously normally you sit on the grid for quite some time. There's all the pre-race festivities and everything like that. But for me, once once the crew's off the grid, um, all the people are gone. You pull your helmet on. It's it's time to do your job. For me, that's when the nerves really start to go away. Still remember as a kid watching Bathurst, like being seven or eight years of age, getting so excited on the on the morning of Bathurst to sit there and watch Peter Brock and Dick Johnson, Alan Moffat, Alan Grice, all those great legends of the sport and to to sort of dream about actually ever racing there one day was at, when you're seven or eight, it's only, it's only just that, it is just a dream and uh, I still remember um, as a kid going to Bathurst and going up there and getting excited to go there and watch all those greats uh, and then I remember that first time going there in 95 knowing that I was going to sort of race on that fame circuit where so many legends were born and everything like that it, it was really such a buzz and every year going back you you sort of you get about 20 k's out of Bathurst and uh, and you look over to your left and you can actually see the mountain you can see the white work the, the white riding on the side of the hill of Mount Panorama you can't quite make it out but it's that sort of it's about that 20 k's out of town that you first get that glimpse of it and and still to this day it gives me tingles and goosebumps when you when you're almost there you can see the mountain and you know that the week's about to start Oh man, look, uh, we're all rooting for you, man, and uh, we'll be watching with interest uh, in a couple of weeks' time. And wish you all the best for the big race, and hopefully you and Craig can, uh, Craig can uh, stand on the podium, man, and get a win. Thanks very much. Look forward to bringing the trophy back. Sweet man. Sweet. Man. Sweet.